Welcome back to Bloomberg Markets. U.S. President Joe Biden and Prime Minister Justin Trudeau rubbed elbows in Ottawa last month. A big part of that conversation around clean energy and job creation with both leaders pledging to work together. Well, yesterday, Finance Minister Chrystia Freeland sounded the alarm on a potential clean tech subsidy war between the two nations. You might recall last summer, Biden introduced the Inflation Reduction Act and a few weeks ago, Freeland tabled a budget with more than $80 billion in clean energy tax credits. That's all to say competition is heating up and it's worth considering the risks for our two economies. For more, let's bring Greg Valliere, longtime U.S. Canada watcher. He's chief U.S. policy strategist at AGF Investments. Greg, always nice to have you with us. Uh, what was your reaction to what the finance minister, Chrystia Freeland, had to say? Well, there's some rifts, Sean. And by the way, great to see you. Thanks for having me on with you. Uh, there are some rifts, and I think if there's one incident that really highlights the fact that there are differences, it's the opening up of Alaska. Uh, Biden announced, as you recall, a couple of months ago, that big chunks of Alaska will be uh, used for drilling for oil. That shocked environmentalists and uh, many in Canada as well who thought that Biden was a, a firm, committed advocate of clean energy. Now there's some doubts. And I wonder, when you think about the numbers on the table, you know, we, we just had a federal budget, as you know, in this country, and one of the big commitments was towards some of these subsidies to get those clean energy projects off the ground or to win over, let's say, you know, electric vehicle production business, given the auto industry is going through such dramatic change. I guess the challenge for a nation like Canada is to compete dollars to dollars with the U.S. is, generally speaking, a losing battle. Yes, but I would add this point, John. I think the U.S. Uh, is running out of money. You look at the new house, the house of Kevin McCarthy, which is going to be talking all during the summer on uh, big spending cuts, maybe a debt ceiling crisis, all of this stuff. So I don't see a lot of extra money available for the U.S. to uh, enter into uh, all of these energy subsidies. Do you think then this sort of new tone after what was a very chummy meeting between Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and, and U.S. President Joe Biden in Ottawa recently is just a reminder that after, you know, we had a moment of diplomacy, this issue of, you know, who's got the money to do uh, what, even if there are some concerns about the spending bill in, in the U.S., are going to be an issue for both countries going forward? I think it could be. Uh, on a lot of other issues, of course, John, like support for Ukraine, there's no uh, there's no dis disagreement at all. I think that the U.S. and Canada will remain very strong supporters of Ukraine. And, it, and in general, I think there's an agreement on what we'd like to try to do on energy. But at some point, the rhetoric has to match the action. And I just see that the environmental movement, at least here in the U.S., in my humble opinion, has lost some momentum. You know, the other uh, area, speaking of momentum, that we continue to watch is bringing manufacturing activity back home, the, the changing nature of the supply chain. It's interesting. I referenced the fact that you had some pro producer inflation data in the U.S. today that suggested to some that, you know, prices, price pressures are easing. Uh, maybe that is tied in part to the supply chain. But there's a longer term story here about the, the, the nature of the supply chain changing and that feeds into competition between let's say china and the united states um, huge new projects taking place because people want to have a better supply chain that is focused on the domestic economy i wonder what you think that plays into the inflation story longer term for anyone who's wondering how quickly inflation can come down you're absolutely right. It's a great point. I think that while inflation, as you point out, has started to ease up a little, we're not out of the woods yet on the supply chain, especially with China. Uh, here, here in Washington, there's quite a bit of friction right now between the U.S. and Macron, a feeling that he went to China and stirred the pot. Uh, in a way that was not productive uh, in terms of trade relations. So, yeah, I, I think one of the several reasons why inflation will stay uncomfortably high is the supply chain. Of course, the labor story is, is big as well. Absolutely. Um, in terms of the, the economic road ahead and, and the role that the governments will play in that, you know, we mentioned obviously the, the, the worries the finance minister here is raising over a, a subsidy war, but it does also feed into spending bills. If, if you're highlighting that there are some now tensions building on how much spending is playing out in Washington, 
what is that going to mean in terms of the fiscal messages going forward, especially if the inflation challenges remain for the rest of the year and, and maybe for the next uh, few years? Yeah, I mean, I do think inflation gradually drifts lower. Maybe we get it down to 3% a year from now. It's not going to be at the Fed's target of 2% in all likelihood. But there, there certainly are other issues that will, uh, will be dominant here. And I, I can't state strongly enough, John, the fight that we're about to have in June and July on our spending, on our debt ceiling, is going to be, I think, unnerving for the financial markets. And it's going to send a message that we don't have the money. We can't get the House of Representatives, a very conservative House, to spend the kind of money that perhaps Canada and other countries would like to see us spend.